I'm going to share with you how I mass made a bunch of book covers in the next 16 minutes. So I hope you'll stick with me. I am utilizing the catch paper that I lay on my table to catch the off fall of whatever project I'm working on. And I have Coptic stitched these mass boards into journals. So let's get started. First, every time I sit down to work, I like to have a clean slate to work on. So I lay down this sheet of blank shipping paper. Shipping paper is actually newsprint. And I lay it on my table <clears throat> and it gives me just a clean slate, if you will. I have cut some chipboard and I've cut it into eight and a half and eight and a half inches in length and six inches in width. <clears throat> and this will be the foundation of the books that I am going to create. What I am going to start with is all of these sheets that I save. I save one every time I clean my table. I save the awful. This is where I clean my brushes. I clean my brayer. It may just come off the side of, of a project, but I find that there's a little design element in every one. I refer to it as chaotic balance. So as you can see, I save them. I'm going to pick out front and back covers out of the ones that I have saved. I have a big box of them in one of my file cabinets, and I'll meet you back here to put these together. To give you an idea of who I am and what my channel is about, my name's Peg. I like to explore journal making. That's kind of one of my most favorite things to do, but I also do alt journaling, art journaling, altar playing cards, dangles, you name it. Just come join me if you like to explore. I would love to have you here on my channel. So this is the first piece that I have cut to work with. Let me lather it up with some glue and water mixture. Make my own supplies generally, Elmer's glue and water, mix that together. And that is my homemade Mod Podge, if you will. I'm going to lay that down and get it positioned where I want it to show on the cover. Then I will miter off these corners and lather up the back of this with glue. Now, this newsprint is pretty fine, so I'm not going to bother making a big deal about trimming down the corners, etc. If I glue it to itself, it is thin enough that it folds over nice, gives me a nice finished corner, and just works fine without going into a lot of fuss. So let me get this all glued down, and we'll move on. So there is the first cover. It's a start. And I'm going to add to these covers. I'm going to add some design elements to them as we get further into the video. So stick with me. You haven't seen everything yet. So this is the first one <clears throat> that I have put together. Now, as I'm working and I was doing some testing with coloring my texture paste and I te tested it and I, and I really kind of like the sheet that I'm working on right now. So I'll probably cannibalize my table. Well, I know I'm going to cannibalize my table, take that sheet off, and I'm going to use that for the back cover to go with this first one that I did. Now, I am hitting it with some black archival ink around the outside edges. Now, there is that one piece on the second sheet that I utilized that has a lot of ink on it and is a little too darkish there on the corner. And I thought, let me add just a, a little bit of design to that element. So I took my white texture paste, put a little bit of black paint in it, and made my texture paste black. I'm going to lay it on there with a spatula and take a cheap plastic, plastic comb and just comb through it. And I think that looks much better than that just smudgy ink on there. So let's tie these two together by doing it on both. And I actually really like this. So I'm going to do it on every single one of these covers that I have created. And that's going to be one of the continuity pieces to 
this little series of books that I'm creating that I'm going to refer to as my Chaotic Balance set. This is the other sheet that I am utilizing. And just to kind of show you what I do when I get started, I lay my covers down, kind of decide how I want to represent it. Then I make my cut and go ahead and cover those covers. So here we are with the first four that I have completed. You have the first one, which was the one that uh, was underneath the Muse kit that I did that I lost all of the footage to. That's a whole other story in itself. This is the one where we took the piece off the table. The, I decided to use that big uh, strip um, for continuity. And then this is the... And now before we get into the project any further, and there is more to come, there is a small bit of breaking news. My channel really needs your support. The thumbs up, the subscriptions, that notification bell all help my channel exponentially, and I thank you very much. So let's move on. I am going to use this folk art pure gold paint. I love it. And by the way, anything I use in my videos, you can purchase um, over at Amazon through an affiliate link from me by going to my channel, tuolcrowsmixmedia.com, and hitting that shop button, and it will take you to my uh, shop supplies, or my, um, I think I call it supplies, crafts, art and craft supplies. So I've put the gold paint down, and I have pulled out some bubble wrap and just tested it there on my couch paper. That's how these are made. And now I'm going to take it bubble wrap to cover. I want to do this on each and every cover because I'm kind of looking at these catch paper books as a series of books, and I want them to have something in common, each and every one of them. So I'm putting the gold bubble wrap on each, as I have also put the texture paste with the comb through on each. So that will be the continuity factor to this chaotic um, structure of these shipping paper catch papers. So there we have the first one complete and I will continue through the rest of these and get each set or each front and back cover covered with this gold bubble wrap. Then I'm going to come back and I have a good size um, lid and I want to put some gold marks with that lid on the covers as well. So there are three things that are going to kind of pull these all together. The bubble wrap in gold, the lid in gold, putting the circular mark on each and every one, and that black texture paste that I created from my own baby powder texture paste that I added some black paint to. So now let's go ahead and get some of these circles with the lid laid down. And we'll just do a couple to show you what I'm doing. And then we will move on to the next thing, which is covering the end sheets for the inside covers. That is going to be our fourth continuity factor because each of the inside covers is all going to be created at the same time using the same method. Braying out, braying out my gold paint in a thin coat on my gel press, hitting it with bubble wrap, hitting it with that lid, and now pulling it with a piece of black cardstock. I knocked my camera out to let me get it back in focus here. And there is what these will look like. I'm going to do eight of those, which will give us front and back cover for each. And then we'll come back and trim those edges. So here are the eight. I've pulled out my crocodile. I am utilizing the quarter inch corner rounder. And I'll just round all corners on all eight of those. 
and that will make my end sheet. Let's get one glued in so we can see how they're going to look. Again, back with the Elmer's glue and water mixture, or the glue and water. I'm going to lather up the back of that board and lay this down. Now you can see the cardstock is, is a little thicker paper, and it just doesn't want to hold right away to that glue and water. So I'm going to get it glued down to the best of my ability with this glue mixture. And once everything is dry, we'll come back and, and just do a quick check. So everything has now dried. I'm going to go back and just run my fingers around the edge of everything, see where I have anything loose, and I'm going to pull out that stronger glue, which is that glitter glue, and just glue my corners down. And I'm just using a baby wipe to wipe off any residue. So there, <clears throat> I think we're starting to come up with some pretty decent, pretty decent uh, book covers. Of course, we need a pocket, we need a belly band, we need something on the inside where we can tuck some additional sheets of paper. I cut the pockets. You can see the pockets up in the right side corner. <clears throat> you will also see the belly bands there. I just cut it out of that black cardstock, cut it to the width of the book, the height that I wanted, pulled out, I believe it was a two-inch uh, circle stamp, and made myself a little divot in each of those pockets. And I have just put some gold paint down, and I'm picking up that gold plate paint very randomly. Don't want anything that looks intentional, because this book was not an intentional piece of art. So let's get those glued down. <clears throat> I'm going to round off the corners with that quarter inch and glue it on three sides to create that pocket. And there you have it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, on this particular one, and this was the only one that I had this issue, I just really didn't like the gap there between the in sheet and the book cover. So I'm going to create some little corner markers or corner protectors or corner covers, whatever you want to call them, out of one of the belly bands. I cut you know, too many belly bands, so I'm going to take one and and utilize it to create these little corner protectors. I just went diagonal <clears throat> across the end of that. It fits right in the corner that way. Now, I thought I was going to add some ink to it, but I kind of like it when I flip it over and there's more black showing. So I'm going to cut myself a second one and use the first one as a template to cut the second. So I'm confident they're both the same size. And then I'll glue those down. And now that little gap that I had that I wasn't happy with, you can no longer see. And this looks like it was an, a, an intentional design element. We'll go with that. It was intentional. So let me just mop up my glue. <clears throat> now the one thing that happens here is I have paint on my hands. So while I'm mopping that up and wiping off the glue, I also got gold paint on it because I didn't wash my hands or I didn't wipe my hands off first. So now I'm going to just pull out my gel press, put some gold paint on my finger, and that we're going to call intentional as well. So now we have that inside front cover complete, and we'll put the belly band on the back cover. We'll do that on each and every book. So here is the belly band going into this one. I'm going to take the quarter inch rounder and round that off to give it just a little more polish. 
put a little glue at the top, a little glue at the bottom, and now I have a belly band where I can tuck papers underneath. I'm going to go around the outside of each of these book covers with that black archival ink just to give them that finishing touch. And I am going to call this particular one complete. That will be the back. But I'm liking the way these are these are coming together. I'm liking the way they look. Here is the first one I completed. I finished it with a Coptic stitch. I did 10 white signatures inside this book. Made it a, you know, quick and simple journal for writing and it is what I would call complete. I also added some lace to my first page of my signatures to give it just a little femininity and I will finish this other set or this other these other three and that will be a wrap so thank you so much for being here once again any supply that I use you can find over on my website toolcrowsmixmedia.com Look for craft and art supplies and everything I use will be right there with an Amazon link. Yes, I do make a small commission, but it does not change your price. Please join me over at my Facebook group to Old Crows Mixed Media on Facebook. It's a small but very comfortable group of about 300 artists that like to share. We participate in some swaps, etc. Love to have you there. Thank you so much. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.